Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. I'm here in one of my special filming spot locations because guess what? We have that purity of a sports car and it's getting some changes for 2024. It's this vehicle right here. This is it. This is a 2024 Mazda MX-5, technically on the window sticker or anywhere on the car do they call it a Miata, but we know that this is the MX-5 Miata and this is the top grand Turing trim. But before we get into this classic drop top rear wheel drive sports car, let's talk about what's going on here. It goes back to 1989, if you could believe that, the birth of the Mazda Miata. And it really was a game changer, but yet Mazda did not create the segment. It goes back to the early 40s and 50s when GIs were coming back from World War II and they had a taste of what those small, light European sports cars were all about. Fast forward to 1989, Mazda brought this pure essence of a sports car, and as they say, the rest is history. Now, this generation has been around since 2016, and from what Mazda is saying, the next generation of the mighty MX-5 Miata is gonna be fully electrified. Now, the good news is, if you have been waiting to buy a new drop top sports car and the Miata has been on your list and you've been waiting for some changes, this is the year, the year to put your money down because there's some changes to the outside and wait until I show you the changes to the interior. But what I wanna find out is, at the end of the day, when you think about all the sports cars that have been built over the years and that are still in existence, out of all of them is the Mazda Miata, truly the king of sports cars, let's go ahead, let's dive in our 2024 and find out. Right off the bat, the biggest change you're gonna see, all new color, it's called Aero Gray, and it reminds me of a color that is in Porsche's lineup known as chalk, a very, very light gray, but what you'll see is as we zoom in, there's some metallic to it. So at the front of the business, where do we see the changes, the color, and of course, our headlight design. So we have a whole new headlight design, still this nice, small, angular style, but you're gonna see our new daytime running lamps. And of course, we have our LED projector beam headlight that is active, which means that it moves with the steering wheel. We come into this lower section. One of my zonks is that they decided to, to put these fake vents in here. I wish they would have made those functional or put some LED fog lamps in there, but this color is really speaking to me, and that's something that Mazda has a palette of colors to put a lot of premium sports cars to shame. Now, as Lori kind of zooms in, she could show you the sparkle. It's got this nice little mist of metallic to it. Like I said, it's not one of those primer flat colors, which chalk or nardo gray with Audi is a flat color. This actually has some metallic to it. Now, as we come across that familiar face, like I said, this face has been around since 2016. This was one of the things that they did for this generation is they wanted it to make it look a little bit more um, muscular. And I think they did that really well, especially in the center section where you have full functionality on the lower grille, flat black, a little bit of gloss black, but then you'll notice on the Grand Touring, you do get a little bit of a splitter extension on each side. Not only is it there because it looks good, but that's also there to give you some aero downforce. Now, if you really are a trackmeister or you really crave twisty bits and going flat out, instead of going the Grand Touring trim, the one that I would recommend to you is the Club. That's the one that comes with the BBS uh, wheels, the Brembo brakes, and all the rest of the goodies. But this is, like I said, the top spec known as the Grand Touring. Now, as we rise up, you got that Mazda badge, a lot of history going over the years. And then I really dig the way they did the hood because when you're behind the wheel of this car, it's sort of like a Porsche. And I'm gonna use a lot of that Porsche Mazda comparison, which may sound weird, but they really got it right. The high peaked hood and fenders give you good visual reference points as you're hitting your apexes down your favorite twisty road or just taking a nice beach cruise drive with the top down. Now, as we come around the bend, if we have new headlights, we gotta have new wheels, and guess what? They delivered 17-inch wheels on this Grand Touring, machine aluminum with the gloss black. Let me know if you like this new design. I think it's actually working. At first, I didn't like it, but the more that I looked at it in my driveway, 
I felt like this was definitely a good choice, especially with our Aero Gray. You do have those Bridgestone tires. And if you're wondering, well, Joe, what's the size? 205 up front, 45 on the sidewall. And like I said, this is a 17 inch wheel. The Grand Touring does come with Bilstein dampers. So don't think that you're gonna get this super soft, you know, squishy marshmallow drive. It, they actually come with Bilstein dampers, which Bilstein has been in the business for decades when it comes to high performance suspension. And really, just the way the car sits is perfect. Now, as we come down the side, I still like the way they keep the classic marker light. Just a nice little touch. Everything else is smooth finish. You have your painted black around the windshield frame. I'm glad that they did that because I feel like if it was color match, it would be too much aero gray. But nice that they did it around the window frame. And then of course, you're gonna get aero gray on your mirror caps. Still has that same great side skirt extension, color matched on the door handles. And then one of the things on this Miata that's just sexy is how the rear end kind of flares out. And when we look at the rear, obviously very important because this is a real wheel drive sports car. 205s squared, all four corners, and you do get a limited slip diff, so the power is gonna get down an asymmetrical limited slip diff, which is new for 2024. That's gonna help get the power to the ground. And if you're wondering, well, Joe, is 205s enough rubber for the road? Oh, yes. And this car that weighs less than 3,000 pounds, you got plenty of grip out of these Bridgestone tires. And of course, if you go club, that's gonna give you the stickier. Bridgestone tire. Now, as we swing around the back, the one thing I wanted them to eliminate was this. I don't know why they have this because you do have your separate antenna, the shark fin antenna on the trunk. Third brake light, melded in clean. And this has got to be probably one of the easiest convertible tops to put down in automotive history. They literally fold within three seconds. I mean, as fast as you can swing your arm back, that claw top drops down. Yes, you can still get an RF, which is that retractable fastback, but the claw top just has that really classic drop top vibe to it. Now, at the tail in the business, love the way they did the taillights, all LED. It almost looks like I said, like a taillight off of a supercar because of just how good aesthetically and all LED. Down below, you're going to get the dual outlet exhaust, and I'm okay with the way that they kind of kept it just raw finish on the end. I don't need a exhaust finisher or anything like that. And then as we come across the center, the one thing that kind of stands out like a zit, like I, I want to pop it, is this guy right here. The way they put the backup camera is very second hand. Because remember, in 2016, a backup camera wasn't required by law. That didn't become required until 2017. And that's where they decided to put it. I think if they put it down below, it'd probably be too low to the ground. But it just, I don't know, it, it looks like a zit and I just wanna, Dr. Pipple Popper, pop that thing. But of course, like I said, MX-5, I didn't lie, it doesn't say MX-5 Miata, just says MX-5. And the way they did the lower bumper area, just super clean and sporty. I love the back end of this thing. But while we go ahead, let's pop the hood and talk about horsepower of this mighty might of a sports car. All right guys, we got the hood popped. You do have that classic prop rod. I'm not gonna zonk it because you know what? This really harks back to the original sports cars and wait until you hear what the bottom line weight of this vehicle is. Another thing I love is when you pop the hood, you could see the engine. You don't have a bunch of generic engine covers. You could see that nice aluminum cam cover, obviously set up for rear wheel drive. And we have our four, one, two, three, four. That's because this is an inline four and our ignition coils. Look at the way they did the bracing from the shock top mounts to the firewall and then to the other side to stiffen up the front of this vehicle. But what do we have? We have a naturally aspirated inline four power plant. It's two liters in displacement, putting out 181 horsepower, 151 pound-feet of torque, and ours has made it to that great slick shifting six-speed manual. You could also get a six-speed automatic if you pr prefer. Now, if you know how to do the dance, on your twinkle toes, zero to 60 in 5.7 seconds. Here's the kicker. This car weighs 2,324 pounds. In today's day and age, 
That is a super lightweight. And if you compare it to the 1989 Mazda Miata, when things were a lot different back in 89, it only weighs about 160 pounds more than the original Miata. MPGs, 26 in the city, 34 on the highway. And just like I said, nice to still see that naturally aspirated inline four. And I think that's one of the reasons why I like the Miata so much is because it's all about just purity. And until you get behind the wheel of one of these, you're probably not gonna fully understand it. But I'm gonna take you for a spin, so stay tuned for that. But before we do, let's go ahead, fire this up, and hear what this MX-5 sounds like. Right, guys here we are inside this 2024 updated Mazda MX-5 Miata Grand Touring I know you're saying to yourself well Joe I, I want to go on an adventure I really want to go on an adventure I want to just enjoy the act and the art of driving and I really don't even want to have a destination I just want to drive not many cars are you able to just be so engaged in the driving experience, especially not spending more than six figures. I like this Miata. How much is it? Well, this is really where, for the value, they bring it for that driving experience. This one being a Grand Touring with the optional color, Aero Gray is an optional color, and this optional Napa leather interior. You're looking at an MSRP of $36,200. Let's see if this deserves to be the king, to the door panels. I love the way they bring the exterior color into the inside. With that aero gray, you'll notice that we have a new color, this light tan with white contrast stitching, all soft touch material. Like my grandmother used to say, not my cup of tea, but the nice thing is, is that if you really are gonna have the top down all the time, that's not gonna get as hot as the black material that normally comes in. Door pockets are not existent because this is about the act of driving and no gloss black, which is nice. Going from the door panel to the dash, same thing. They really did a great job upgrading the quality of the materials for 2024. This is all soft touch with the nice stitching. Let me know if you're digging the two-tone. I think it's just something nice to have as an option. Everybody doesn't need to have a black interior. Now, this cup holder, the great thing about it is you could have it here or you can remove it. They're very easy to move around. And I'll show you some other places where you could put the cup holder. New, though, for 2024, besides the color, besides the Napa leather and the tan, is we have a 10.25-inch infotainment system screen. If you're wondering, is it a touch screen? No. You could touch it, but it doesn't do anything. The good news, though, is I love the horizontal display of it. It's got your navigation, and then you just got to use the direct drive control knob, which, if you notice, you do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is wonderful. And like I said, with the control knob, it's easy to get into the different information. You can go into your vehicle status, monitor, all those goodies, or go right back to navigation. Let me put it into reverse. I'm going to have to zonk it. I want the resolution to do, be a little bit more clear, and I would like it to take up all 10.25 inches. Why is it only taking up a small amount? I just hit the hazards button for some reason, just for fun. And then we're right back where we started. Working our way down, we got our start-stop button. When you go grand turning, you have nice silver trim around all the switch gear, real knobs. Three stages of heated seats, no ventilated seats because this is a convertible, and they're trying to keep the price point and check. You do have two USB-Cs, which are nice. And you got a place for three Twinkies. So two Twinkies for you, one for your passenger. But this is where the magic happens. That slick shifting, six-speed manual transmission, probably in my top three of modern manual transmissions. They really did some changes back in 2019 to shorten the throws, make the engagement a little bit more crisp. Love the way they did the shifting, the, the shifting, the stitching on the shift knob. 
And then of course you have your gear pattern there. You do get a good old fashioned mechanical e-brake with that beautiful stitching. You'll notice that on the center console, they actually upgraded the material, not just the tan, but also it's got a little bit of a soft touch to it with more stitching. I'll put this down so Lori can show you that direct drive control knob. Very easy to use. It really, really is, I promise. Nice soft touch on the center armrest. Pick this up. You got enough room, I would probably say, for five atomic fireballs. So if you like having balls in your mouth, you could keep your atomic fireballs in there and then just put one atomic fireball at a time. That's what I recommend, one atomic fireball at a time. You see these little notches here? This is another area where you could put the cup holders and you could put two. We do have a nice little lockable cubby, which in there you could easily put, I would say, a whole box of Twinkies very easily. And then you can lock them up so people don't get into your Twinkie stash. And then you got the seats, the Napa leather. You'll notice how the speakers are built into the headrest. Stitching, very comfortable, full manual assist for the passenger and full manual assist for the driver. The one thing I want to point out is with the top up, I'm six feet tall, plenty, good and plenty amount of room in here. But why don't you come over here to the business end? I want to show you behind this freaking race car S steering wheel in this Miata. All right, guys, business time behind the wheel. You'll notice that the sill has a little bit of aluminum plating here. This is actually important because when you're getting out, you're likely to kick this, and this will take a better beating than just the plastic. Pedal box is perfect. I love, you got your clutch, your brake, and your throttle. You'll notice this kick panel that I'm tapping with my right foot. That's there, so as you're going on and off throttle, you're not gonna rip a hole through the carpet. Plus, heel toe down shifting in this thing is a freaking breeze. Nice clutch action, and of course, we got a solid dead pedal. The great news is, for the newer generation of Miatas, there's actually a lot more adjustments you can make. The seats, slide which is important of course you do have manual controls for everything else but the other big piece of the puzzle is the steering wheel first of all it's a perfect size nice small steering wheel it's got that babe ruth baseball stitching all the way around flat black on the buttons but the killer thing is is that guess what this is an adjustable tilting and telescoping steering wheel which is really nice another thing i want to show you is right here you see this guy you actually could shut off the traction control, but then you could shut off the traction control and some of the nannies by hitting that button, which I'll be doing that when we go on throttle. And then instrumentation right out of a freaking race car, just like a Porsche. The tack is in the center, 7,500 RPM red line. Look at that thing. Yeah, we're gonna be going on throttle. And then you have the speedometer and your digital gauge cluster on the other side. But, you know, it's one of those cars that it really feels like you're putting on an isotoner glove and it just wraps around you. But why don't we go ahead, it does have a trunk. I actually gonna probably surprise you with it and show you that it's usable and then we're gonna be going on throttle and rowing through the six speed in this 2024 MX-5. All right guys, I know this may seem like an oxymoron, a Miata with a trunk, but it's actually not too shabby. You do have a button that you hit that pops the rear trunk flips up, you actually have 4.6 cubic feet of space. And I've been able to fit three cases of Costco Kirkland water back here. Either three cases of that or about 35 boxes of Twinkies, whichever you prefer. I was a little thirsty that day, so I went with the water. If I was hungry, I would definitely go after the Twinkies, but it does make it usable. I mean, it's more than just a loaf of bread. I actually think that there's more space in here than in a Camaro convertible, if you could imagine that, especially with the top down. But why don't we go ahead, if you're ready, I'm ready. We got the top down, we got the keys. Let's go for an on-throttle spin in our manual transmission Miata. All right, guys, we are inside this 2024 Mazda MX-5, the Miata, the original drop top that just uh, keeps on kicking right away. You know, even though I'm six feet tall, I still feel very comfortable in here. And even though I personally wouldn't choose the tan interior, I think it's nice to have, especially when the top's down, because, you know, when you're in that hot sun, 
the the black interior obviously just absorbs all that heat but uh i want to start with the top up show you how much room we have and i want to do some on throttle uh while we're at it so if you're ready i'm definitely ready found a nice little twisty road second gear on throttle just rev it out on the brakes look at this nice I tell you, the gearbox in this thing is really a hot knife through butter. And even though this is not the club edition, I'm still able to just throw it around. And it just loves the twisties. Woohoo! Back end comes out a little bit. Heel toe downshifting is amazing with this gearbox. The pedals are perfectly placed. You are getting a bit of wind noise, obviously, with the top being up, but uh, that just comes with the territory of having a soft top. If you want a little bit less noise, then you go RF with that retractable hard top. But I'm telling you right now, man, this thing, look at this. It really does a great job communicating what's going on with the front wheels, through the steering wheel and you almost feel like the rear axles are bolted to your freaking butt because uh, you're able to tell exactly what's going on. Now, one of the things like I've pointed out before in my MX-5 Miata reviews is that the car does have a bit of, a bit of body roll to it, which may catch you off guard at first, but it's interesting how the MX-5 loves the dance. It actually enjoys the body roll because what it does is it allows the weight to set up on that particular side of the vehicle. Once it's set, you are locked and loaded. Keep ripping the twisty bits. But like I said, compared to a BRZ or a GR86, it just, at first it may surprise you just how the car kind of moves around, even the club trim. I'm not even just talking about this one being the Grand Touring. Now, obviously with the club trim, you're gonna get uh, the BBS wheels, the Brembo brakes, but you're still getting plenty of great braking capability. And the Grand Touring, like I said earlier, does have the Bilstein shock absorbers. But I just love being wrapped around have this car wrapped around me it just feels really really freaking amazing and like a little race car it really does on throttle here we go just rev it out yeah 7500 rpm even on bumpy stuff the car actually handles very 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 well uh it, it has the perfect amount of compression and rebound set up in each of the shock absorbers to really allow you to be comfortable but also feel what's going on and then the best part of this you want to have a top-down experience watch this I mean we're gonna slow down to about I don't know 15 miles an hour look how easy this is doesn't get any easier than that I'm gonna leave the side glass up to try to control and contain some of the uh the wind noise but this is what it's all about i feel like if you're gonna go miata you gotta go soft top it just gives you the purest form of driving and just cars like these uh don't really exist much anymore are you ready all right here we go nice Really just, look at this, just communicates through the steering wheel like a champ. <laughs> Not too much buffeting, which is nice. On the brakes, heel toe downshift. Here we go. Nice. <laughs> a car that just rewards you and it's one of those things that if you've never driven one 
you just won't understand it. You owe it to yourself to get behind the wheel of one of these. What I love about the soft top, not only having that really open air experience is you don't get as much buffeting as you do as the RF when the retractable top is down. So something to, to think about there. All right, guys, to launch this car is a piece of pie. The clutch is very manageable, feels good, is able to be modulated very well, and I'm in first gear. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's let this real wheel drive car rip. All right, well, here we go. <laughs> A chirping tire is a happy tire. On those brakes. Look at this. Yeah! The engine is so rev happy. It just wants to rev and rev and rev. <laughs> Look at this. I like the way it's got the gear indicator nice and large. Very balanced, look at that. I'm not white knuckling the steering wheel. It's just a very, very balanced car, it really is. Feels amazing. People are jealous because you're having so much fun behind the wheel of the car, and they're not. That's what it boils down to. And then on the long straight roads, like I said, the seats are comfortable. This Napa leather is really nice. I, you could definitely tell how they raised the materials in here. And it's like one of those things like, I'm glad that they finally did it. Because like I said, this car has been around this generation since 2016. Another thing you're gonna love is, is the nice balanced sound. There's no fake noises. You have the intake that you could hear very clearly. A little bit of sound out the back, nothing too crazy. You could always change that if you want more. But the fact that you can be able to drive this vehicle and hear the real deal sounds and enjoy every single one of them just puts a smile on my face. If you're ready, I'm ready. On right, throttle, here we go, second gear, all the way out. <laughs> Look at this. Woohoo! Look at this, solid on the brakes. On right, throttle! And then you got the new infotainment system. Look at this. <laughs> it's a car that loves to be driven and one that's going to reward you if you know what you're doing. And that's the thing is, I know a lot of people want more power, more power, more power. This car is just so balanced and so fun. And the fact that this is probably the last of the ICE Miatas blows my mind. Absolutely blows my mind. Having that nice large tech, that's the information you need. Right smack dab in the center. Great feedback from the wheel. And like I said, even though I'm six feet tall, I still have the window frame getting the air over my head. I'm able to obviously have a conversation and you could hear me. And it just feels like an isotoner glove. Like you just slide it on you and you are locked and loaded. But this is really what driving is all about. And one of these days, damn it, I feel like I'm gonna add one of these uh, Miatas to the Radius Rides garage. 
because if you want the purest form of sports car, this is it. The thing that this car makes me feel is back when I was a kid, it was all about my friends and I hopping on our bikes and just like exploring. There used to be a lot of areas where I grew up where, you know, there was a lot of uh, land, just open land, and we would go and explore. And I feel like this car brings back that feeling. Like you just find some back roads, doesn't have to be the twistiest of roads, doesn't have to be the best quality of road, but you just go find some back roads and explore. And that's what I love about the feeling of this car. And it's like you don't have to be going 10 tenths to enjoy the car. Even just taking a gingerly drive is a lot of fun and is an experience. I think that's another thing that this car really does is that every drive is truly a, an experience. But even with this road not being the smoothest, it feels good. I don't feel like my internal organs are being shaken out of my body. And this gearbox is a freaking hot knife through butter. You go back to right after World War II, it's like you understand why the GIs wanted these small sports cars. They got to experience them over in Europe, MGs and Triumphs and all these other different brands. And uh, they wanted that experience here in, in the United States. And thankfully, Mazda, bringing this Miata since 1989 is bringing that whole feeling. And when you think about just convertible sports cars, there's not many left. So it's nice that they still have this one kicking and doing its thing. But obviously I could be driving this for days and telling you how awesome it is. We're gonna get back to where it all started and wrap this one up. So I will see you in a Mazda Minute. All right guys, been another masterful day here in sunny Clearwater with this Miata drop top. Definitely wanna thank everybody at Mazda USA for throwing me the keys to this updated MX-5. Let me know what you think. Based off everything that you've seen, and especially that driving engagement, is the Miata truly the king of all sports cars? Let me know down in that comment section, but if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit the subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being with us on this journey. Definitely got to give it to the guns behind the lens. Lori working that camera like a champ. She's suited up for battle, and boy, is she knocking them down one by one. Show us some love in the comment section. Thank you, Lori, for being the badass that you are. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.